Haha, <laughs> you're here! Uh, y yes you literally called me over here. I have nothing to tell you. What? But you told me there were more switch skills for me. You're not ready. I'm not ready, but I, I was just ready for the last one. No, you're not ready. But my friend was ready five minutes ago and we've killed literally the same things. No, you don't understand. What? Don't I understand? That you are not ready. Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, welcome one and all to an absolutely glorious celebration of what might just be my personal favorite part of Monster Hunter Rise. Switch skills. If you're here, you probably already know what they are. But in case you don't, early in the story, you will unlock switch skills. This system is the ability to replace certain parts of your moveset with alternative options that can either slightly or drastically adjust your playstyle. Some are very clear in how you're supposed to use them, downright telling you why you would want them over their alternative, and some are extremely strange and obscure but have a lot of potential of paired with the right skills. In any case, the first time that you get your first switch skill from Master at Sushi, you may be wondering, how many are there in the game? How do I get all of them? And what are the ones for my specific weapon? These are the questions that I am here to answer today, and in that order, actually. So if you want to know how to get them, but don't want to spoil yourself on actually seeing what they are, then that section is split off later on. That said, you probably do want to see them because they're just so freaking cool and stylish as all hell. I absolutely adore this system, guys. They are letting you create your own truly unique playstyles and tailor them to whatever it is that you want to do. You get to play how you want. To start off then, there are three switch skills for every weapon in the game as of release. Count them, three. Every weapon gets one that affects your silk binds, replaces one of your silk binds, and then two other completely separate moveset affecting changes. When you either reach HR2 or complete a specific early village quest, you will unlock the switch skill system. And with that, the first switch skill for every single weapon. A a second switch skill is unlocked for the weapons by creating equipment, and then the third one is through a specific quest. The third one you can't get until the high rank, as the associated quests are high rank hub quests, but your second switch skill can be acquired almost as early as you get access to all of the maps. This switch skill is given to you entirely based upon your weapon collection. More specifically, the amount of forging and upgrading that you have done. If you press the forge or upgrade button a total of eight times, you will unlock your next switch skill. As in including the base weapon, each time you either forge a new one of your weapon type or upgrade one that you already have, each one counts towards your eight total. Building up the iron and bone trees together is an extremely low resource requirement and can all be done in low rank, making it not only the most efficient way of unlocking the second switch skill, but also the most efficient way of unlocking loads of second switch skills for multiple weapons. Trust me, I unlocked the skills for all 14 weapons. I tried tons of different combinations. Iron and bone was just definitely the simplest that I found. As for quests, look away now if you don't want to see the specific monsters in the quest that unlock the switch skills. At Hubstar rank 4, you will unlock the switch skill quest for Sword and Shield, Hunting Horn, Switch Axe, Light Bowgun. At Hubstar rank 5, you will unlock the Switch skill quest for Great Sword, Hammer, Lance, Charge Blade, and Heavy Bowgun. At Hubstar rank 6, you will unlock the Switch skill quest for Long Sword, Dual Blades, Gun Lance, Insect Glaive, and Bow. Meaning no matter what weapon you play, you will have all Switch skills unlocked before you reach the final star of High Rank. Some of you may think that this is a little late to unlock a piece of your toolkit, but I just think it is the perfect incentive to play loads and loads of more after the story is finished to get to enjoy your new gameplay style. The beginning of the end of the end of the beginning has begun. And now we get to my favorite part of this, the star of the show as far as I'm concerned. I will now be in the training room showing you every single switch skill one at a time. Here we go, starting with Greatsword. Your first switch skill is the ability to turn your shoulder tackle into a guarding shoulder tackle with your shield in front of you. Your second switch skill is the ability to exchange True Charge Slash with Rage Slash, which is a much faster attack that deals a significant amount less damage unless it absorbs an attack, as the damage it deals depends on the amount of damage that you receive while holding the button down. Your third switch skill is a Silk Bind replacement for Hunting Edge, instead becoming Adamant Charged Slash, which pulls you forward into the middle of your main combo while also giving you power armor through the movement portion. The second weapon up is Longsword, 
and your first switch skill replaces your regular draw attack with a stylish as hell move that also absorbs hits. You can use this to start your combos against a monster by negating their own attack, iframing up to them and unleashing hell. Your second switch skill replaces your regular spirit round slash combo for powering up the spirit gauge to instead be spirit reckoning combo, a much shorter range and higher damage combo straight up taken out of a hunting style in Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. This is awesome to see used in this way. Your third switch skill replaces the Soaring Kick Silkbind with Silkbind Sakura Slash, a long range high damage attack that also raises your spirit gauge. With this playstyle, your only spirit gauge spender is the parry Silkbind move, so keep that in mind. Third weapon coming in now is the Sword and Shield. Your first switch skill is really neat. It gives you the ability to switch out the second hit of your shield combo with a thrusting multi-hit sword attack that works fantastically with elements. Your second switch skill replaces your advancing slash attack with sliding slash, which put simply is aerial style straight from Monster Hunter Generations. With this equipped, you can press a button to straight up jump off the monster and follow up with a powerful aerial strike. This one is super fun to play with and honestly makes me want to play sword and shield a bit more in Rise, actually. Uh, I actually want to play every weapon more in Rise than I have in previous Monster Hunter games. Really, there's some really super cool stuff going on here. I am serious. The third switch skill for sword and shield replaces your windmill Silkbind attack with Metsu Shoryu Geki Silkbind, a straight up wirebug driven shield uppercut that also parries incoming attacks to deal extra damage. Man, Sword and Shield got some sweet switch skills. Weapon number four coming up is Dual Blades with their first switch skill replacing Demon Flurry Rush, which is the A attack in Demon Mode and Draw Attack in Arch Demon Mode with Demon Flight, which essentially enables a Dual Blades aerial style from which you can either do a flurry of slashes at your initial location or begin your fancy Beyblade attack on a long monster. Switch skill 2 for Dual Blades is a really fun customizable one. It replaces normal demon mode with all of its speed and evasion bonuses with something called Feral Demon Mode. Activating Feral Demon Mode in itself is an attack, and you do more damage in Feral Demon Mode than you do in Normal Demon Mode at the cost of less evasive options. Your third switch skill is the ability to replace your Silkbind Piercing Bind with one called Tower Vault, which launches you into the air. This one is mostly just an alternate option for specific fights. Fifth weapon on the docket today is everyone's favorite pokey pokey long stick with a shield attached, the Lance. Your first switch skill replaces the Anchor Rage Silk Bind with Spiral Thrust, which begins with a guard point and then flings you in a direction of your choosing. The second switch skill replaces the dash attack, which is your sprint move, with a version that charges forward with your shield in front of you, both changing the damage of the attack to blunt damage and also protecting you from incoming attacks while you're charging. The third switch skill replaces your normal guard with a very counter-focused lance playstyle. The very start of your guard animation counts as a parry and will allow you to follow up with a very strong attack. However, if you press this too late, you'll just get straight up knocked on your butt, so that makes it sort of risk and reward. Next up is our sixth weapon, the Gun Lance, and this one is super exciting because of the way that it's been implemented. Your first switch skill replaces the ability to use charged shelling with Blast Dash. Yeah, you heard that right. This isn't even a silk bind. It's just a thing that you can do on repeat. If you play a style of Gun Lance that doesn't need to charge shots, you can just rocket fling yourself around the place. Switch skill the second for the Lance the Gun replaces your Hail Cutter Silk Bind with a Silk Bind called Ground Splitter, which while also being a movement ability is mainly notable for temporarily increasing the damage dealt by your shells, Worm Stake, and Wyvern's Fire. The third switch skill replaces your classic quick reload after an attack with Guard Reload, which is a safe way to reload with your shield raised while also refilling your Worm Stake. This is recommended for gun lances that already have less ammo, as it doesn't refill as much ammo, so it doesn't affect those weapons quite as much. Next weapon in line is one of my babies, the Hammer! Hammer's first switch skill makes your Big Bang combo longer to pull off, but in return it gives you a straight up counter move for the Hammer! Hit an attacking monster with the downward strike motion of this hammer move, and it will negate the attack entirely, after which you can follow up with a super-powered golf swing attack. Switch skill number two replaces your Silkbind spinning bludgeon attack with the Silkbind Dash Breaker, a forward dashing iframe at filled attack that holds your hammer's charge level, so you can follow it up with a fully charged attack if you charged before you use it. The third switch skill for the hammer replaces your charge switch strength, which is your blue charge mode, with one called Charge Switch 
Courage. This charge mode, the Courage mode, is incredibly quick and nimble, feisty yet mobile. Rather than just having three levels of charge attacks, you instead have a charge attack combo. Yes, you can charge each individual attack, but this is much closer to the true charge slash from the greatsword, but if you can move around at full speed while doing it. The weapon after this is the one who has actually just completely stolen my heart in Monster Hunter Rise, the Hunting Horn. The first switch skill for the Barbarian Bard replaces your overhead smash with an attack called Melodic Slap, basically changing a very high angle of attack ability with one that comes in much lower, does a bit less damage, but has a good bit of extra stun values to it. Your second switch skill completely redefines the way that your melodies work, giving you an option that is somewhat closer to the old style of Hunting Horn before Monster Hunter Rise, replacing your normal normal breakdance move and song playing style of two notes per song to instead be your breakdance empties the music staff. Any note that was on the music staff has its song played. Play one blue note, one red note, one green note, then hit the perform button, then you'll have all of your songs played. That's how this style works. The attack also comes out at a very different angle and has some interesting implications when paired with specific hunting horn songs. The third switch skill is the ability to replace the super badass Earthshaker Silkbind with one Silkbind called Bead of Resonance, which I personally lovingly refer to as the Sonic Egg. When you activate the Sonic Egg, you will lay it from your regular egg laying position and then any Sonic effects will cause the egg to pulse out a tick of Sonic damage from where it was placed. The main downside of this is that the egg is locked to the spot where you put it down. You can't put down multiple, so there's just the one. But if you can keep a monster on that one spot, the damage of this can be a little bit crazy. Not only does it pulse out some damage whenever you play a song, it also pulses whenever you breakdance and when you do a magnificent trio. And if you play the Sonic Wave song specifically, it makes the Sonic Egg pulse a bit extra. On top of this, if you are using a horn that does not have the attack up song, and you play any song while the egg is on the floor, it will play an attack up song for you and your friends. Basically saying, hey, if you want to use a hunting horn that doesn't have attack up, while still getting the effect of having attack up, just use this silk bind. Next up, weapon-wise, is the Switch Axe and its Switch Skills. Firstly, you can replace your Forward Axe Slash with a move that throws you forward much further, but does more damage and also can morph slash into the sword double slash, which is quite strong. The second switch skill for Switch Axe replaces your finishing discharge move in sword mode with compressed finishing discharge. This move is not affected by your activation gauge in the slightest and can therefore be used at full power whenever the hell you want, dealing a large burst of damage and making you immune to knockbacks while you are doing it. The third switch skill for this weapon replaces your Silkbind Invincible Gambit with a Silkbind called Soaring Wyvern Blade, which flings you straight up, from which you can do an aerial forward thrust through the monster, filling your activation gauge a little bit and causing a real nice explosion. The next weapon on the chopping block is an infamous chopping block itself, the Charge Blade. Your first switch skill is by far one of the most exciting things for me in the full game after having played the demo. The return of Savage Axe Mode in an incredibly exciting way. This switch skill lets you replace the ability to charge up your sword with Condensed Spinning Slash, which is activated the same way that you would normally charge up your sword, but instead sends your axe spinning like a saw blade and when you let go of the charged attack, it will then cleave through the monster also like a saw blade in this super satisfying manner. From this point until you leave axe mode, every time you press the attack button, you can hold the attack button down for a ridiculous number of extra file hits on every attack, every swing that you take at the monster. I have no idea how effective this actually is, but by God is it satisfying to use. Like. Actually, if there is one switch skill here that you try for a weapon that you don't even play, please bring this out in the training room and give it a go. You won't regret it. It is satisfying as hell. The second switch skill here replaces your normal morph attack with a morph slash that takes longer to pull off, but is guarding the whole time instead of just the tiny guard point. And if you get hit while guarding with this, it can be followed up with an extra powerful version of the element discharge. The third switch skill replaces your counter peak performance silk bind with the silk bind axe hopper a badass move that uses a combination of the wire bug and your axe for leverage to fling yourself into the air and follow up with an extra powerful aerial element discharge. After this, we get to visit the Insect Glaive for its first switch skill, which replaces Leaping Slash with Advanced Round Slash, which is a forward flinging attack, which will fling you into the air if you get hit during the forward slash by a monster's attack. The second switch skill replaces your Tornado Slash, part of your A button combo, with an attack called Tetra Seal Slash, which has more hits than the Tornado Slash, 
and also can lure in your Kinsect if they're a Powder style Kinsect. The third switch skill replaces your Recall Kinsect Silkbind with a Silkbind called Diving Wyvern, which you can activate midair to turn into a spike aimed directly under you, doing a highly concentrated punch of damage. Then moving on to the ranged weapons and starting with the Light Bowgun, we have their first switch skill, Elemental Reload, which replaces your regular reload with a slower reload that increases the damage of specifically elemental shots. Very interesting. Your second switch skill called Quick Step Evade replaces your normal high distance covering evade with a shorter distance hop that also powers up any shots fired directly after charging. Your third switch skill is replacing your Silkbind Fanning Vault with one called Fanning Maneuver, which sends you flying horizontally from the monster while also temporarily boosting your attack power. Moving on to the larger cousin of this weapon, the Heavy Bow Gun, your first switch skill replaces your melee attack with the ability to straight up tackle like a great sword, but even stronger defensively, as you just straight up block the attack if you have the shield mod equipped on your bow gun. Heavy Bow Gun's second switch skill is a replacement for your counter shot silk bind called Counter Charge, which absorbs a monster attack to shorten the time needed to charge your shots. And then your final switch skill is an alternative to your special ammo that deals less damage but heals the user. It's interesting. Then onto the final weapon, we've got the Bow, who starts off with an alternative to their normal power shot called Absolute Power Shot. This costs more stamina in order to gain the ability to stun monsters. Your second switch skill is an alternative for your charging sidestep called Dodge Bolt, which does damage every time you dodge. If there's a monster in front of you, it swings the arrow. And also, if you dodge an attack close enough with this move, it will increase your charge level of your next shot dramatically. And then finally, the last switch skill of the last weapon, replacing your focus shot silk bind is one called Aerial Aim, which flings you into the air, putting you into position to do a very strong aerial bow combo or a strong downward melee attack or a little combo of both. And that is all of them. All of the switch skills and how to get them. Everyone, I, I won't lie, this has been a bit of an undertaking, so I really hope that you all enjoyed this video and got something out of it. I've been Cotton Dinosaur, and this has been your guide to all of the switch skills in Monster Hunter Rise and how to unlock them. Are you excited to try any of these weapons now that you've seen what their switch skills are? Which switch skills are your favorite? Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye